Hello and welcome to Autoinform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey and in this section of Frank's Toolbox I'd like to introduce you to the process and technique of actual injector testing. The business end of fuel delivery has always and will always be the actual injector itself. These are in effect electromechanical devices. Some of the limitations in the past with regards to strict and tighter emission control is the delay in which electronic control departs from hydraulic functionality. The purpose of this tool, this bench, is to test very accurately the electrohydraulic functionality. Now what's happened with direct petrol in particular, and these are direct petrol injectors, is that the accuracy requirement from those injectors has increased dramatically. I'd like to go through some of the processes in which we can test these injectors. So in the past, we would probably look at delivery rates by measuring them in the flasks, and we'd also look at the spray pattern visually. That now has changed dramatically. The actual atomization of the fuel, which occurs between 50 bar of pressure and in excess of 100 bar of pressure, changes from the previous four, three, four bar of delivery pressure. So a lot's changed. So let me go through the process of um, an evaluation of this set of injectors. First of all, the machine is on. I've mounted the injectors in what is in effect a simulated rail, um, um, fuel rail. The pressure we're working at is not the actual pressure as found on the system, 50 to 100 knot bar, but a much lower pressure. That has been overcome by extending the actual testing time. So if there was a deviation from performance by extending the opening time of the injector, that deviation would be multiplied. So the test is still a very accurate and valid test. Machine is switched on. I'm going to select a GDI injector or, or direct petrol injection. This has the integrated GDI driver in this particular variant of, of uh, test bench standard manifold or GDI, we're on GDI. They're sequentially controlled, individually controlled, peak and hold, that's the type of current. Most direct petrol injectors are controlled either by ground switched, peak and hold, switching ground on with a peak current to open them and a holding current at a lower value, or by discharging a capacitor, power switched. So sequential peak and hold is a suitable test for this particular style of injector. The number of injectors, I've mounted four only. To be sure, and these are individually identified within the software, to ensure I've got the right sockets to the injector, I'm going to select eight injectors. So basically, it's going to send a drive signal through each cable for me, not just four injectors. And I can now determine the length of test period. I've left it on 30 seconds. It's the longest test period. So I've given plenty of opportunity for testing um, the opening and delivery rates. From this point on, we're now in the main program where we can prime the injectors, which will bleed air. We can conduct a leak test where there is no drive signal, but pressure, the pump is run. So any leakage past the, the pintle, the nozzle, will be determined. We can do an inductance test. Now this is fairly new technology. Uh, in the past, we've looked at simple resistance, we've looked at voltage, we've looked at current. Inductance is the amount of electrical energy created in the charging and discharging of the coil and is measured in henrys, in our case, um, millihenrys. So it's, it's not just testing the driver, how much current's going through the driver circuit, but is also testing the efficiency of the actual coil itself, the magnetic field strength, the performance of the winding, the coil, and the physical movement of the pintle, which changes the magnetic field during the charge process. So it's, it's a very, very accurate test. Flow rates, and we have a whole range of programs where the time, duty cycle, in other words, we can drive these injectors through an entire performance range, which is also very important. A fault can occur at just one delivery rate or speed, engine speed, 
Um, so we need to test them thoroughly through the entire range. We can have an automated test which selects a whole a random um, um, control inputs uh, just to get an overall view of uh, performance across the entire range automatically set by the machine. We can do a static flow. This is for, well we use this for matching injectors. Sometimes if we're replacing injectors with a higher performance product, we need to, call, we need to do what we call an open pintle flow check. That's checking the actual volumetric efficiency of the injector with a static but open pintle. That's um, also quite important if you're replacing injectors and you're trying to match their actual performance. And of course we can clean them. We have an ultrasonic bath and um, should cleaning be required, we can then drive those injectors in a fluid medium um, and it causes implosions, um, energy that will then literally shake the debris, dirt and contamination from the injector. And we have a calculator. So um, I think we'll prime them. Machine is on, everything's safe. I'm going to set the pressure in my case. Most things we test are at four bar. That's just prime the injector. But the quick looks if they're leaking, they're not. Into a leak test, which is no drive, but run the pump. You can hear the pump running. That's pressurizing the injector internally. And I'm looking to see if there's any leak. And of course, you can leave them to stand. I suggest that you do actually leave them to stand. At the moment, that looks fine. So for this purpose of demonstration, we'll assume that that is a satisfactory leak test. Inductance, let's have a look at the efficiency of the coils here. 1.4, 1.4, 1.4, So the efficiency of electrical energy creation within the coil of each injector is perfect. That's just gone to 1.5. That's not a bad deviation, I'll accept that. Back to 1.4. So in other words, the performance of hydraulic delivery will not be affected because the inductance of each injector is identical. If the inductance process varied dramatically, then its hydraulic performance will vary also, and that's not good news. Flow rates, now of course for this test, we then bring the injectors and we have an automated flow test, so let's use the automated program. And we're now going to discharge the injectors. You may have noticed that these direct injectors are directional. They're held in a fixed position in the engine, as has been for some time now. And the nozzle is directional, generally, towards the spark plug. So a quick test. And you will probably hear the different tone as it changes from one control sequence to another. And then we would generally repeat this process as close to a hundred within the flask. So we get a nice percentage error deviation, just purely a numerical number. Obviously the more cycles you produce during a test process, the more accurate the test will be. The average becomes much more accurate. We could, of course, increase the pressure a little. I have control within reason. I can go up to around 10 bar, but we would not normally go that high. You can see already there is a deviation across these four injectors and a significant deviation, and that's not good news. Once again, the whole point of electronic control with the correct hydraulic functionality is that these injectors will indeed deliver identical quantities of fuel right across the range. You can see that the quantity on that injector is substantially more than flasks two and three. The closest being flask four. Number three is lagging now considerably. So we'd have a situation here where the lambda sensor will detect quantities of oxygen and correct the fueling, but only across all four injectors. So basically, what I'm suggesting is we could have a very lean cylinder at this point. I think that adequately demonstrates the benefits of this tool and the accuracy of the test process. 
and I hope that gives you some thought that when you do have a fueling fault in engine, ultimately this is the only way to test injectors. Thank you for watching the presentation. I hope it's been of some use and I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you.